Yeah, well, it's important. Yeah, don't get any Yes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, information session on the 10th of September. Uh, no, yes, yes. We've received apologies from Councillors Moore, Templeton, and McClelland. And Harrison Hunt is on Zoom and um, Councillor Goff's on Zoom. James. Okay, good afternoon. Oh, good morning, everyone. Who wrote this? Every and welcome to today's information session. Before we start, a reminder that this workshop has been live streamed. However, while the workshop is open to the public, it is for staff to provide guidance to elected members. It is not a forum for debate or decisions. It is also not a forum for the public to provide input into decisions or bring other matters to the attention of council. If a member of the public does want to provide input, please talk to our staff and we will help you any way we can. So we have uh, Canterbury AMP Association board update. So welcome, uh, David, Peter and Ethan, and uh, looking forward to what you have to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you to all the councillors present and those on Zoom for the opportunity to tell you a bit of it about the developments of the show over recent months. Um, it's fair to say that as I've become involved, I've been aware now that Canterbury AMP Association and the show has been a bit of a problem child for the council, probably for 15 years, and that moves for the time they came out of Addington, for those of you who remember when it was there, and went out to the new position. But as of August this year, the show is under new management, and if I could take the opportunity of introducing Ethan Hill, uh, who is a BDO audit accountant, has, uh, has come onto the board as an independent. Peter Engel, who has a long career in the rural industry, currently with Hazlitt Rural, uh, also here as an independent director. The board is a lot smaller than it was, three independents and three from the general committee, which is the organisation within Canterbury AMP that's responsible for the livestock. So we're under new management, and we are determined, A, to make sure we get a show going for this year. And then the more important function is actually to concentrate on making sure the association is sustainable into the future and doesn't have to keep coming back to the council for support. So I got involved with this project for uh, two reasons. One is I believe the show week is critical to Christchurch. It's iconic. It's known right throughout New Zealand. Uh, I used to be involved in breeding livestock and showing at the show, and I can tell you we used to get people coming from Australia quite regularly to show week. It's iconic, and you cannot have show week if you haven't got the Christchurch show. So that's the first point that got me involved. The second thing that's important for me is my passion for agriculture and the need to make sure we continually take opportunities to bring town and country together. At various times, you've seen a divide develop between urban and rural, and the Christchurch show is the opportunity to actually bring those two groups of people together. And Canterbury is still predominantly an agricultural province. That's what earns a lot of the money from this area. And it's important that the city people have the opportunity to then liaise with the country, and the show provides that. So the show 24, uh, not far away now. We must be down to about 70 days. It is locked and loaded and will occur this year. We've engaged with a professional uh, ma event management company called Event Hire, and the only change you'll really see is the dates it operates. We would traditionally operate on a Wednesday, a Thursday, and Friday, Friday being our anniversary day, and therefore a public holiday. This year, we'll operate on the Thursday, the Friday, and the Saturday. The show will be slightly reduced compared with what it's been in the past, but I honestly don't think the public will notice that. It'll still be a really good event. Uh, so we're taking the opportunity really to bring you as stakeholders in this, uh, this situation, stakeholders working with us to make sure you're up to date with what we've done so far and what we're working on. Can I just take the opportunity of thanking Andrew Rutledge, 
uh, Rupert Bowl and Nigel Cox, who have been working with us from the council. They have been very receptive as we presented our case to them. Andrew Rutledge, we asked to come on to the board as an independent. He pointed out the council policy didn't allow him to do that, but he was happy to be an advisor to the board. So as we work through the next stage, I think his expertise is going to be vital. This board is not taking any director's fees. We're all doing it out of a sense of public duty to make sure the show survives. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Peter it will give you some idea of sort of their longer term strategy that we're intent on establishing so that the Kappa Canterbury AMP Association is viable into the future. Bear in mind, it's been around for 162 years. I want to make sure we set it up for the next 162 years. So thank you again for your time, Peter. No, thanks, David. So look, in addition to the planning for this year's show, we've been developing our thinking and evaluating the options around what's required to build a quality event that is sustainably economic longer term. So it's, it's quite early in that process. We haven't signed off with the board, but I just want to share some of our thinking with you today. Um, Christchurch New Zealand did have a very good report done by MI Global Partners um, in Australia, which is a very good reference document. They did, I think, did a similar exercise for the Sydney Royal Show. Um, <clears throat> but I suppose to start with, um, I think... To, to take it forward and get a better outcome, needs, we need to be reasonably pragmatic about the issues that faced it over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, the approach previously is a relatively high year-round cost structure where everything is internalised in terms of management of the show and, and the infrastructure. And it was built on the basis that alternate income streams would be developed, which would uh, mitigate the reliance on the three-day show. <laughs> in effect... Um, Realistically, the costs happened, but the income didn't happen. Um, <clears throat> so there were certain costs, but uncertain income. Um, it was also reliant on the ability to recruit an internal event management capability. Um, and starting from scratch, that's, that's a big ask. Um, there was also a very centralised structure. There's about 10 sections within what we call the, the livestock and agri-related events to sharing the, the wood chopping. So those sections are run by what's called the General Committee, which is a group of volunteers. There's 26 on that committee and they're a lot of volunteers. But there was a very centralised financial admin support for those sections, really without the required processes and clarity over who was responsible and accountable for what. And that led to quite a breakdown in the relationship between the, um, the management board and the General Committee. Um, <clears throat> so this is our current thinking. Um, our thinking is to focus on the AMP show and minimise the year-round costs, mainly staff, by engaging the existing capacity and capability of proven professional event management company who look after infrastructure and entertainment in the general trade sites. CAPA will focus on the, the livestock and related sections, which are where their expertise is. Um, and that structure effectively would reduce our costs by almost, uh, almost two-thirds in terms of the overhead costs of running the organization, but of course we're sharing the income. But we're sharing the income with someone who has existing capacity and capability um, and has skin in the game and is only gonna get paid if they perform. Um, so that's the, the type of model we're thinking. Some of that is driven by what we've seen in the past and some of it is driven by financial necessity. To, to redevelop an internal uh, capacity to run the show requires a lot of working capital to get you through the next year's show and so on. So that, that has its difficulties, but that aside, I think there's real merit in working with someone like Avento. I don't know if any of you went to the Light and Sound show on the weekend um, in Hagley Park, but they run those Light and Sound shows and uh, a group of 10 people who've been going for 10 years and have developed a business. So they already have evidence and ability to run it at a lot cheaper cost than what it was run at previously. Mm -hmm. I think, for example, electricity this year might cost us 30 grand versus 65 last year. So the there's, there's a level of expertise and capability that they can bring to the table that doesn't detract from our control over the mix of what's in the show and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so the opportunities we see going forward are to significantly improve the entertainment and trade site mix. And any of you who have been to Wanaka will realise the following, that that's developed by getting that mix right. Um, develop an agricultural innovation hub to ensure relevance to the rural community. 
there's a lot of very interesting things happening around, even within Canterbury now, in that innovation space, which we think would be good to display. Um, the historic culture within the sect, the livestock side of it, is to look after the, the exhibitors and the horse riders and the entertainers. We've started the process of moving that to focus on the people that pay the bills, which are the ticket holders, the sponsors, and so on. For now, you will find some of those just livestock people only there for two days, in one case, one day, because that's what suits them and that's the way they've always done it. But in actual fact, that's not what drives the income. So they've actually been very responsive and understanding that that culture has to change a bit. If we're going to have public there on a sad day, we need livestock there on a sad day and so on. So that won't change overnight, but over the next two or three years, we'll move that culture forward. If we develop the show as we plan to, uh, the sponsorship support from large agri-trade sites and so on, that, would, that will naturally flow with it. If we get the people through the gate and the attendance, um, then the sponsors and trade large trade site holders will follow that attendance. Um, oh, interesting, I spoke to a large one the other day and they'd actually pulled out of the field days where I thought everyone was going to simply because their, uh, their investigation had shown that they get a lot larger throughput through the, through the AMP show, which is a wee bit contra to what I expected. So if we can get the numbers up, we'll get the support up. We're also, and Event Hire are very good at this, focus on driving pre-sales. Um, if you look at some of the large shows in the UK, and I know they've got lots of larger population, a lot of them are sold out two months before the show starts. Now, if you can get to that, you remove the, the, the weather risk from your event. Um, so um, you'll see going forward a lot of promotion around pre-sales of tickets and, and incentives and discounts to get that to happen. So in summary, our, our initial modeling indicates that, uh, this, that it will be viable going forward. Um, it'd be about a two year time frame, I think, to rebuild it to the scale we want to. Um, we have to, as next steps, nail down uh, an agreement with the entire post this show. Um, and part of that will be colored by their experience in terms of the numbers and the economics from their perspective. What helps the economics is that they own all the food places, they own the entertainment sides of it. I think last year, um, you know, they were all, they were all, you know, led out to third parties. So, so there's more income streams coming into this uh, relationship than there was previously. Um, so we still have to nail down the terms of that agreement. Um, but we've agreed that we're best just to let a bit of time to get our to get our heads around it from both perspectives before we actually sit down and say how we're going to split this income and responsibility going forward. So, so that's where we're at today. Thanks very much. Brilliant. So you're good. Um, Tim, please. And then Vic. Yeah, I think just two quick questions. The first one, I think it's a really good move with regards to going to a professional management company because health and safety, liquor licenses, traffic management. So. Where does the, the, the buck stop with regards to the ownership of those? Is it, it's your event, so I'm just, yep. you kind of. Yep, so um, the health and safety one is um, the final ownership still rests with us. Yep. They have a, they have their own ownership issues, um, but that doesn't remove our ownership issues. Yep. Um, so we're working together with them. Um, they've engaged an external consultant who does the Wanaka show, did the sale GP and so on. Yep. Um, and he's working alongside us as well. Right. So that still sits with us. The traffic management plan, similarly, they're driving the development of it, um, but subject to our sign-off. Yep. Yep. Cool. Um, and the second question is, and it's something you said, David, which is absolutely right, that the connection between urban and rurals, I mean, this is famous for it, and it was the envy of New Zealand. Um, this organisation, actually, when I was here, we created the Cup and Show Week, which was, again, the envy of New Zealand, and had people from Australia, etc. Where does that is that synchronize? Is, is that going to happen again? Do you think, or I'm not worried? Well, I'd, I'd the events are all going to happen. Yes, yes. I'd like to see the city, one way or the other, through either the council or its agencies, get back behind the, the cup and show week. To my mind, it was a very successful campaign. Yeah. Um, you know, there are some questions. Of, we were told by Christchurch and Ed there are some questions about the morality of racing and gambling. Listen, move past that. 
Mm. I think it is such an important event and the show's sandwiched in between us. If it brings people into Christchurch and has an impact, an economic impact on the city, we should embrace it. Absolutely, because it did spread out to Ashburton, etc. So it really was Canterbury and Christchurch. So well, it's yeah. the Canterbury AMP show. I think we've got to keep that in mind. This year it's the Christchurch show because of the arrangements we've come up with the event hire. Uh, at one stage, it was marketed as the New Zealand show. I'd like personally to get it back to being the Canterbury AMP. Yeah. And we need to get back to our members as well. Yeah. That's declined over time. We need to get back to our farmers and say, if you want the show to be successful, you also must pay your subscription, become a member of the association and show some real moral and financial support to this if it's going to survive. Right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Cheers. Thank you, Tim. Excellent. Pick. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. We always like to hear praise for our staff, so that was good to hear. Thank you. I'm interested in understanding what it is, what role our staff have had in this uh, redevelopment and, and for the future of AMP, and more particularly, what is it that you require from council, and have our staff given any indication about funding support from council? Pete has been dealing with that. So. Um. <laughs> Uh, we've been dealing with Andrew from from a, from probably around about the time I got appointed, which was only about six weeks ago, um, as such. Um, and Andrew's been uh, very supportive and stepped us through the process as such. Uh, and we have reached agreement on some financial support for this year and next year, which is, um, achieves our expectations in that space. In terms of going forward, we were very keen to have a board presence um, because of from this from the council because of their role as a major stakeholder in this event. Um, so in discussions with that, Andrew's agreed to come on as a as an observer slash advisor to the board um, going forward. So um, very shortly we'll as a board be discussing, for example, the the contractual arrangements we seek to have with the professional event manager going forward and and Andrew will have his input to that. So um, one of the things we talked about very early was that we wanted to uh, lift the level of engagement with the Christchurch City Council and that. So does that answer your question? Partly. I'm interested in the agreement on the funding support. I'm not sure whether that's come to our table or whether we've had any hand over that. So please, can you let us know what the nature of that is so that we... Yep. Okay. Yep. So the nature of that is that um, $125,000 has been agreed to uh, for this for this show. Um, and an underwrite of the same amount for next year should it be required. Do you want to say where the, do the officers want to say where that funding is? Nig from? Nigel can probably um, give the detail. It's, yes. it's yes. essentially funded yes. by the City Identity Fund. Yeah, so that's what I'm interested in is understanding where it's coming from. Thanks. Okay, you got that? Um, Kelly. Yeah, thanks a lot, gentlemen. Um, obviously, the show's a bit of a Canterbury institution. Um, how confident are you that what's gone on over the last couple of years in terms of uncertainty is um, it's not going to affect attendance? Um, and, and do you have plans in place to, you know, to show that it's business as usual, um, albeit in a slightly different manner? Yep. There's been considerable media coverage, um, certainly the Christchurch Press, and in the rural papers, to which the farmers have a large catchment of rural papers, to say the show's back on. I'm not sure whether you've heard, but there's radio adver advertisements running at the moment saying the show's back on. What we're keen to do as a board is put the past behind us. No point in postmortems. The past is the past. What we want to do is focus positively on show 24, show 25 and on. That's really encouraging, thanks. Okay, that's good. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Yanni, please. Yep. Yeah, uh, thank you. And yeah, thank you for um, stepping up. Like, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it would, it would be a shame to lose the, have lost the show. And so, yeah, just commend you for that. Um, I was just interested if you can talk a little bit about the royal show. It used to be a royal show at one point. And just I was kind of understand those other dynamics between the different labels and what you call it and, and what that means in terms of um, going forward. I'm a member of the Royal Ag. At this stage, I have we haven't done enough homework to understand the implication for it being a royal show, and whether and that's I understand is why they changed the name to the New Zealand Show. It can be a royal show, in my opinion, and still be the Canterbury AMP going forward, but we haven't put any focus on 
the you know the uh, label of the royal show at this stage. That's work after we get this particular show done and dusted. Okay. But I think it's an important um, accolade that would be silly to lose if we can maintain it. Yeah, and I mean we should acknowledge the royal family has actually been very kind and generous to Christchurch with you know post earthquakes and March fifteenth. So that we do have a lot of. I had good the privilege as Minister of Ag of accompanying. Prince Charles, as he was then, around the show the last time he was in Christchurch, and in fact had to battle with VCO, which organises the royal visits, to make sure that he came to Christchurch on show day. Right. He thoroughly enjoyed it. Maybe we can get him back as king. Uh, cool. Uh, I'll work on that if that's a royal <laughs> for you, Yanni. And, uh, I'll have it done and dusted by the end of the week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, David's um, got many, many talents. Just, uh, just, just I, obviously not for today, but it would be good at some point, looking to that strengthening that relationship and that engagement with us. It would be good to understand a little bit more about the medium to long term kind of planning and how we can work with you around that as well. We're happy to come back anytime you want us. We've really appreciated the opportunity to bring you guys up to date with the progress we've made. We're pretty pleased with the progress we've made so far. As we say, it was, I think, the 10th of August that we all got appointed. So we've, we've, we've focused on it. And the good news is, um, Show 24 runs this year, okay. absolutely certain. Good job. Thank you. Uh, Victoria, you had another question? Yeah, thanks. It's just supplementary to my earlier one, and I'm not sure whether it's a staff or um, presenter's uh, answer. At the time that we uh, uh, negotiated and, and settled the relief, financial relief package earlier this year with the sale of the land, was it anticipated at that time that there'd be additional funding going to the show? Andrew? Yeah, so um, you recall that um, we bought out the lease from Kappa, and that, that money has been deposited in a trust fund. Now, the initial revenue from that is obviously some way away, but the intent is that the, um, there's a board that administers that trust, and they will make the decision on how much they're going to draw down annually and provide to Kappa um, for the purposes of assisting with the running of the show. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. And and I, I totally understand you've only just got your feet under the desk. And um, uh, thank you very much for coming in and telling us what's going on. I'm looking forward to working with you and the whole board uh, going into the future. And uh, as you as you said, we've got to get back to show week. It's not just show day and some other stuff. It's well, and that's what made people come to Christchurch and fill our bars and restaurants and hotels up. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Okie doke. So.